Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Hi, Zaza. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm perfect. So, could you uh, introduce yourself? My name is Pat Opara, and I'm Zoe's mum. Um, you grew up, and you grew up obviously with grandma and granddad. Mm -hmm. um, and so, when you were growing up, what was one thing I guess that happened, or how they maybe disciplined you as a child that you thought I'd never do myself? Ooh. I never do with you guys. Yeah. And your dad, your granddad, God rest his soul. One thing he never liked was anybody lying to him and he never, never, except for one occasion, raised his hand on any of us. Mm. Never. Your grandma, maybe, yes. But your granddad <laughs> I know grandma. never, never. <laughs> but to, and I tell you I was at fault with this one and I remember this very clearly. Whatever I did that made him do this, I don't think and he never did it again. Mm. He's, he he lashed me because I lied. Mm. I lied and he what couldn't like believe that? it. I used to go to school when I was younger with your grandma. So her, she's a teacher, mm. as you know. So her time of um, teaching, they changed the class because of the volume, the number of children in the school. So you've got the morning section and you've got afternoon section. So when I got to like, they will call it standard two, which mm. is year two, mm. I was able to go to school myself and I walk miles. So she goes in the morning with your auntie mm -hmm. and your and your uncle and I would walk myself to school. Mm -hmm. So that day I just didn't feel when I walk myself to school, daddy walks around the area. So mm -hmm. after work at five o'clock he will come and pick me up mm -hmm. in the car. And that day I didn't go. You didn't go to school. I didn't go to school. You bunked school. I bunked school. <laughs> I was so tired. I didn't go to school. How old are you? Six. That was about that. Mother, age. you're bunking school I at age six. I couldn't because it was a distance. I could walk, and I and I, I think the truth about it is one of my friends and I, we just didn't want to go to school that day, and he what? he came back. Age six. Yes. He, he, came, he came back. That was the only time. He came back and he asked me, did I go to school? I said, yeah. You know, you know Auntie Maria, Nena's mom, they lived there. I said, go and ask Maria. That I, 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 I went with Maria and I stayed in Maria's house and then I left. And wow. I said to him, you, you didn't come out early. He looked at me. He said, you went to school, really? He said, yes. The man had come and checked in school, they didn't see me. They were worried. So he came home and he said to mom, Obviously, grandma knew, knew. I had already got told off by grandma when mm. they came home and met me at home. And she said, you didn't go to school. And we had my um, my aunties who lived with us. Um, so I was hiding from everybody. So he came back and he stood me in the living room and said, did you go to school today? So how come you left early? I said, I didn't leave early. I waited, I didn't see you. So I walked home with my friends and stopped at Maria's and all of that. Age six. And, and then he, he looked at me, he says, you sure you went to school? So my mom said to me, you're in trouble. She's not the, she's the one who I thought would have actually been mad and smacked me, but he, she didn't. And so he left and he went across the school. There's a school directly opposite us. He went into the field and I knew. And he came back with something like, it's a whip, but it's as tiny as those things there. And very like, like a cord, but it's um, a, um, a root of something, the root of like, a plant. And he took me to the backyard. He said, I'm going to ask you for the last time. Did oh, you go crying. to school? Then I, was, I didn't say anything. Yes. And he whipped me and whipped me and said, next time you will not, it's not because you didn't go to school, but the fact that you lied to me that you mm. did go to school when you didn't, you will not do this again. Yeah. And I think that was it. Yeah. I deserved it. <laughs> and that was it. Um, grandma came and they took me. It was bad because I had them. It was here. Child protection would have come and arrested him in the police. Um, they, they put Vaseline and everything on it. The following morning, he came to, he didn't apologize, but he, he came to ask how I was. I completely ignored him. But after that, we never talked about it. He never in his life raised a finger at me ever mm -hmm. or any of my, my brother and sister. So that I don't do with you guys, mm. not because we are here, but I, I found a different way of, you know, kind of disciplining and talking mm. and trying to understand and grounding when it will work mm. so yeah you didn't really like, i didn't like, smack we just twist the mouth yes i will hold your mouth and then she'll twist, <laughs> <laughs> she'll twist the whole mouth it she'll just twist the whole mouth or the ear yeah. Like, so and listen. This, this was a painful like yeah. you feel like it's not gonna hurt but yeah. yeah when someone twists your mouth while you're speaking you'll be shocked yeah. <laughs> introduce yourself 
I'm Efe Rissere and I am Uvia's mom. Obviously, you're not a native to this United Kingdom, so you moved here. What year did you move to the UK, mom? So how did when you? When were you born? Ninety-four. Like him, nineteen ninety-four. Nineteen ninety-four. Mm. Okay. January. January. Okay. So how did you find the transition from living in Nigeria to living in the United Kingdom? Cold. Cold. Very cold. Yeah. I was very homesick. You were homesick. Homesick. That was an understatement. How did you feel? <laughs> I wanted to go back home. <laughs> I wanted to go back home. I was cold to my bones. Yeah, that's how cold yeah. I was. But it, it got better with time. How long were you homesick for? I was homesick for quite a while though. For quite a while. Because I came in and probably three or four months later I got pregnant with you. Yeah. So it didn't it didn't stop. It was such a did I say a stressful time? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I did want my mom with me. So yeah. that made me quite homesick. But here you have got to cook for yourself. Uh -huh. well, if I was in Nigeria, yeah. my mom would have been doing quite a lot of these things mm -hmm. or coming to see me wherever I am to be sure that I'm coping, I'm fine. But here I was just me and your dad. Mm -hmm. So so it wasn't funny but Yeah. And where were you living at the time? Deptford. And how was that living arrangement? It was a small place. It was what do you call it? Bed? Studio. Bed seat or studio? Yeah. There was the, just one room yeah. and then the kitchen, a small kitchenette and the bathroom and the toilet in another door. It was small. Yeah. But it was your dad and myself so it was nice. It was nice. That's yes, it's, it was something that was, that was for us. Yes. Uh, I didn't have to make sure that any other person was in the house or behave myself. So mm -hmm. it was it was a good feeling. It was That's a good, good feeling. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, my mom told me that I don't know if she told me or I overheard her, but she was saying that when she moved to New Cross, so by the time she moved to New Cross, we were about, I was probably like 10 years old, that she was, in her mind, she still thought, did you think you were going back to Nigeria? Or it wasn't your plan to stay? No, it wasn't my plan to stay. Yeah. Your dad said we should, we will come here, stay for a while. Yeah. Probably that was his way of getting me to come. Yeah. And I will stay for a while and then we'll go back home. Yeah. But because I went to school, finished uni in Nigeria before I came, mm -hmm. the jobs we could get then was not what we aspired to. So even if I was going to stay here yeah. for a short while, yeah. I was not going to do the kind of jobs that were available. What kind of jobs were available? Mm, cleaning. Yeah. Uh, Care, care, care work or something. Yeah, care work, yeah. Care work yeah. in those days. I wasn't yeah. trained. I was, a, I was a pharmacist before I came. So for even if I was going to stay here for a long, a short while, yeah. I was still going to practice pharmacy. Yeah. So after going through the system of converting mm -hmm. and becoming a pharmacist, it was, it gave us a different kind of uh, level of standard of living. living yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it became more bearable yeah. to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Probably what made me not like it initially was the kind of job I was able to do yeah. with my degree. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when I became a pharmacist qualified and I was able to practice, it yeah. became better. better. So I could handle it, I could just manage to overcome my homesickness. Mm. So you were here, you had had your degree yes, in pharmacy before you came, before to, the UK. came to the UK. You came here, you couldn't be a pharmacist, so did you have to be a cleaner? Yes, for maybe a few months. Yeah. And I just could not take it. I'm sure you couldn't, Mom. <laughs> I, I know you cannot. So I just could not take it. I actually went to school for how many years yes, to be doing this? I did it for about three months, I think, or so. And then I went I went there one evening and the person said, Oh, we really like you, we really want you to 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 keep this job. Uh, but I think it was a pen was been on the floor for yeah. a while. I should have taken the pen off. I just went home and I didn't go back. <laughs> if that was what your daddy brought me here for, I'm sorry, it wasn't going to work. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I just went home. So I said, okay, now we have you have to do some voluntary just to get you into the system. Yeah. So I voluntary did, in pharmacy. Uh, I couldn't be a pharmacist. Yeah. But I could be a technician. Okay. I was allowed to. Yeah. So for me to get into the system, it was voluntary before I could. When they saw I had the experience, yeah. Now they gave me a job. Yeah. At least that was bearable. Yeah. I, I was not a pharmacist that was doing what I was trained to do. Yeah. So that was uh, not bad. Great. Great. <laughs> 
Did you know what, guys? Oh, my mom has been so nervous. <laughs> She's been so nervous. Like, she has essentially been hyperventilating this whole time. But I'm telling her to just breathe. It's okay. Yeah. Say hello to everybody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, Devilish Mom. Mm -hmm. I'm Felicia. Mm -hmm. Kona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In what ways do you think that we are alike? We are alike because I don't talk too much. I don't talk too much. That doesn't mean that I don't see. For me to open my mouth and talk, I'd rather watch. Mm -hmm. Before I open my mouth, then you know that the thing is up. Yeah. <laughs> the time is up. Yeah. I'm, I'm full of what I'm yeah. saying. And the uh, people tell me that I'm not friendly. Mm. But it's not that I'm not friendly. I'm a shy person in mm. a bit and I'm a kind of a reserve. reserve. So um I take my time. I study people before I get close to them because um I don't want to be I don't want you to be my friend tomorrow we don't talk yeah so i rather watch you first to see if we can move together before i get close to you yeah. that's me that's how people see me i say i'm not friendly i don't like when people talk to me anyhow you can't talk to me anyhow i don't like it if you tell me you don't like this oh okay today I, I spoke to you and I said something that you are not happy about mm -hmm. it and you let me know. There's no way I'm going to do that thing again. Mm -hmm. and that's me. And Beverly don't like you to repeat things to her. So when you say it to us, she'll make sure she do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Why did you choose to be with Daddy. A few people were hanging around me, but because I was hey, you quite... Hmm? Yeah, people were, were coming around, but I was very reserved. I used to sit at home a lot and do a lot of reading. And so when I got into nursing school, um, it's like some of the things you call peer pressure now. And I'm thinking, God, you know, these girls, and they were much older than me. Mm. They had sugar daddies, some did, and I'm going, what? <laughs> and some, some had, uh, you know, boyfriends and all of that. So I still remained kind of quiet in a way. Mm. Um, and I knew there were some people who were interested and they would come, we just sit down and chat and they mm. leave. But when I met your daddy, he was my uncle, my late uncle's friend. Mm. They were both at university. He used to come and visit your uncle. I think he started getting interested in me. There were three of his friends and one of them was such a pain. I used to kind of lock myself in. Was he pestering you? Well, yeah, he would come and he would be talking to the point where when he saw that I was chatting more to your dad and he would go, oh, that man for me, Beku, is that the person you, <laughs> you're going to go to? And I thought, I said to him, why are you hanging around here? If you're coming here because you of me, just back off because I don't like you. So wow, just like him. that. Yeah, I said to him, I don't like just you. Just like that. And so he says, mm, okay. So, but he was very calm. Mm. He was very respectful. Daddy was very calm yeah, respectful. he was calm, respectful. He always kind of... Um, talked to me in an intellectual way mm. um, wow. and and that that and I warmed up to that 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 was really kind of my kind of thing mm. um, and I kind of saw a level of responsible person in him mm. than I did with any other not that they were all at university not that they, they weren't responsible but I think that that was it at the time and then um, after that holiday we left and we started writing each other and all of that love letters and that's it yeah I love letters yeah. guys he, he showed me some real of them when we, he, he real showed romance. me when we went home he says oh look at all your love letters to me <laughs> <laughs> when did you know that you were ready to get married that was um it was a big decision and i would say this is where my faith comes in so when i met him i remember going to the chapel at this school of nursing mm -hmm. at the convent and I, and I prayed and i said if this person is not the right person you know Turn let, to let it go just away. Yes. They've been cushion prayers been working since yeah, 19... it has been. Um, <laughs> 19, remember when you talked to me something I said to you, let's we'll pray over it. Mm. And then that has been my my yes. way of uh, making um making keeping that connection and knowing that I'm being guided. Mm. And in nothing, he was very respectful. He, um sort of level of our relationship would be when I'm ready or when I want to say do anything. Mm. Um he was very protective of me, I mm. would say. So there were things that I was looking for 
which was clear but i needed to be guided mm. to make sure that i was uh, making the right choice so you what kind of had like a i guess a piece that i had a piece yes a much piece very safe mm. Very safe. We're talking about safety today. I was telling them about when he used to take me when we were still going out where he lived uh, because he was a manager for the federal um, government um, agriculture yeah, at the time. <laughs> yeah. So he used to take me on the boat with his workers. And oh. there's a river there in Nuguta, it was called. I don't like water. I don't mm -hmm. like going on the boat. But because mm -hmm. he was there, he's the only person, except once in Lagos, where I went on a car, who would, I would sit on a motorbike with. Wow. So that used to be our thing. Whenever I came home or he came, he would <laughs> on the get motorbike. back. And then he would carry me up and down <laughs> our road. And, that, and that's fine. I'm, I'm safe. Love. Yeah. Love. I wasn't yeah. village, <laughs> I just I just we're in town. So I felt secure and I felt safe with him. Mm. Um, yeah, and um, and I felt that it was blessed. When we were young and you were a working mum, what was it like being a working mum at the time? You, you always feel guilty for not being there. Mm. Yeah, because it was more your dad that was looking after you people because the kind of job I go into the pharmacy, I'm not able to just because I was, I was in community pharmacy, so I'm the only pharmacist available. You mm. just cannot leave a something. So it was more of your dad. You had a capable dad, so mm. I wasn't really. I was. I was okay. You feel mm. guilty most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. What do you feel like you missed out on? I missed out on your parents' evening. You know some of your hospital doctor's appointment was your dad. I was mm -hmm. not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very. It's part of uh, being in England or being in Britain. Yeah. yeah so, do, do you feel like if you were in Nigeria, it would have been different? Yes. You just leave work. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, oh, and moreover, it's not as rigid as it is here. Yeah. How long did you say you felt guilty for? You felt guilty the whole time. No, when you were quite young. Yeah. Yes, I did. When you were quite like young. Like five? Not when you were in secondary school. By the yeah, time sure. you got to secondary school, I, I was... I know you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, more primary school. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so yeah. if you could go back to little more primary school, would you change it? Would you try and change your profession? Would you change your working hours? Or would you just do it the same way over again? If I'm married, to, it, your, it, if I'm married to your dad, yes, I'll do it the same way. <laughs> What's that because mean? I didn't feel, I didn't feel people missed out on anything. Cool. Yes, you people didn't miss out. If it was affection, he was there 24-7. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. And more of mom that gave birth to you. Dad yeah. was people, person, people who were quite young that looked after you people. Yeah. So with him by my side, I could go to work and not think about it yeah. he, so he was always there yeah even when I went to so when you were born you were probably two something Tejri was less than six months I left you and went to Sunderland to to do my conversion course it was mm. daddy that was looking after you so when, when I when I when I was there I probably came back a few times because I wanted to see you when I come home Tejri would not agree to sleep anywhere Tejri was so scared of me going away she was sleeping on my chest wow yes only when she's asleep that I'll push her to the side mm -hmm. anytime she sees me come from Sunderland oh she'll sleep on my chest throughout yeah. the weekend yeah but by the time she wakes up on Monday morning I'm gone yeah but you probably were okay you probably yeah. on that one. so I she said. went to Sunderland to do the conversion course to allow her to be a pharmacist in the UK to so Sunderland University right yeah, that yeah. Was. can you think of a particular memory in your childhood that you hold close to your heart I have siblings in my mom's side. I have siblings in my daddy's side. Actually, my mom and my dad is only me, mm. but I have stepbrothers, sisters. So when I, I think I was little, I was living with my stepmom. Mm. Yeah. And then, then I didn't know she was my stepmom. She's a very nice woman. Mm. But my siblings, them, the way they treat the woman is. Nice, nice. Yeah. But the siblings, mm -hmm. they were especially my elder sister, mm -hmm. the firstborn of my dad. She's so she was always hard on me, and I didn't know then that time. I didn't know that yeah. they are not the same. But later on, I find out. And then the first time I know, I I recall, I know my mom. In the Christmas time, she bought me a shoe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what did the shoe look like? <laughs> it was this uh, platform shoes that mm. you people were wearing. Okay. I was crying that I want that shoe. Mm. And I think she 
bought some and, and finally you know when she brought the shoe and I, I, I put it on I couldn't walk on oh, it <laughs> so was it heels? Yeah, oh, it was heels. Oh, okay. Flat. how old was you at that time? <clears throat> What is your fondest memory that you have of me from childhood? Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> do I start? And I still see that image every time. Oh, what what image? The image of I going, you know, you started with I used to work. One day I went on agency. And oh then, my gosh, and you remember this say. one? <laughs> you were sitting right at the top of the stairs. How old waiting. was I? About two. three, two and a half. You ha I hadn't had Vivian, you were. And when I came up the stairs, I'm going, oh my God, your daddy said, thank God that he tried several times to get you back into bed, that he ended up sitting in the living room. And you were, you were sitting right at the, you know the stairs in yeah. the bedroom, you were sitting right at the top of that stairs. I will never, never. There are so many other fun memories, but that is a picture that I see all the time. I will never forget it. On the stairs, waiting for my mom to come home from work. Come home from work. And I was fighting with dad. Yeah. Get off me! Don't leave me. I want my mommy. That's what you said. I want my mommy. So, and the rest of them is sort of all the achievements you've made and. Mm -hmm that your last graduation was like, I've been blown. I, I try not to cry and I said I would not cry because <laughs> I was really happy. Um, yeah, so thank you Zoe. Oh, so she's, such a, she's actually a wet white for like three. <laughs> but. Yeah. It's alright, but yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the you. channel. Mm. Appreciate ya. Yeah, thank so, you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. And Lovely you lots. too. So come. Me okay. too. I think that's it then. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting now. For what? For my, my second mother. What? From you. Yeah, I'm waiting now to make sure that, um, you know, like, Emeka has his own little one. So that's She's all I pray. So Waiting for husband. I'm just praying for husband, though. <laughs> Good one, though. <laughs> Every day, my knees are This is what I get. You people look at this one. So, why did you choose to be with dad? Dad was my first boyfriend, mm -hmm. but not before, and nobody before him. Okay. So, why did you stick with him? I met other people, but. Your dad is, has got structure in his life, mm. that's number one. And secondly, he would do anything for me. Mm. Because he was my first boyfriend, it kind of, it kind of spoils me in that he said that I come first before his friends. Mm. I come first before any other thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So anybody I met that, I just look at it and say, mm -mm. Yeah. if I'm not first, yeah. Or having spoiled or being first, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that is uh, what is. I'm not the romantic type. Your dad is a romantic type. So, yeah. So after what he has taught me, any other person has to live up to that standard. Up to that standard. So yeah. that is why it, is, it was difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's good. That's a good reason. So what was it like being a working mom? A working mom, it's not easy, but you have to work to provide for your children. When the children is there, it's your responsibility to look after them, to put food on the table for them, whatever they need. Get up early and go to work, leave your children. By the time you come home, they're about to go to bed. You don't spend the quality time with them, but you can't stay home at the same time because you have to provide for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to go to work so you can get money to buy what they want, provide for them, put food on the table. I know you work as a team, the dad, family, but as a woman, you too have to support. You can't leave everything for the man to do it because the children are involved. And as we all know, this country. The bills is all over the place, so mm. you have to make effort to help our home as well. So, is there anything that you would change or you would do differently? Um, yes, um, the thing is, then I was thinking, um, uh, we can get money to provide for the children, thinking that is the most important thing, but um, no matter what, um, the situation is. You have to be there, show love, cuddling, what they want, you know, pampering them. That one twist, 
very important you can go to work get money thousands of pounds but by the time the children will grow up you will be growing apart which is not good so um, no matter how busy we are we have to find time for our children be there for them <laughs> I'm just scared of what you're going to answer for this question. So, in what ways do you think I'm like you? And in what ways do you think I'm not like you? Okay. Um, I, the, the one thing I really remember, which I still have what you wrote when you were about six or so, mm. was um, it was uh, one of those cards that you do in school and you described me as an independent woman, hard working, I and I would, I was, but yeah, about that age. <laughs> it was quite powerful and I still have it. And that you'd like to be like me when you grow up and your grandma. Mm. And you remember I often say to you that you've got a lot of your grandma's quality. So what you got from me, and I'm going to go you, me, daddy and grandma. What you got from me is maybe your vibrant, your friendliness, your mm. liking to be around people, mm. your wanting to help people all the time. Um, and yeah, that that is a very unique quality that kind of make people embrace you. Mm. Now the persistence of being yourself being strong charactered which you are and i know you believe you are you're strong charactered you got a bit from your daddy and i say grandmother because there's a lot of futures around how your grandma decides and make decisions which you got so it's like a family threat thing but that strong character of wanting to do well pushing yourself all the time mm. you got from maybe all three of us but i think you've got a bit of that a bit of stubbornness from your grandma and it shows once in a while you know what i mean <laughs> in what ways if any do you think that i'd like you hmm. i knew you you would do <laughs> <laughs> yeah like me you're strong-willed okay hmm. Yeah, you are strong words. Yeah, 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 you are. Strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you can take a little that they throw at you mm -hmm. and shrug your shoulder and move on. Yeah, that's you as well, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, yes. You are not laid back. I'm laid back. You are forward. <laughs> no, you are not. You are not. So, that, 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 we are different there. We are different. What do you mean? You are, what do you mean I'm not laid back? For example, you're a go-getter. You oh, go okay. Get, yes. You have your diary packed full. You want to do this. You want to do that. Yeah. When I come back from work, I want to cuddle up in my bed. Yeah. Just rest. Uh, okay. I get yeah, that. I get that. Was there anything that your parents did that you said to yourself, mm -mm, I'm never going to do this when I'm older? Mm -hmm. Yes. But I have stepsisters, stepbrothers from my dad and my mom both sides. And uh, sometimes, when you go to your mom's side, you feel like you don't fit in there. Sometimes when you go to your dad's side, you think you don't fit in there and you fit lonely. Mm. So I said to myself when I was young, kind of experience I had that time, I said to myself, I'm never going to do that. Having kids with different men, no, I won't do it. If I want to have three or four, I will make sure that. I have it with one man. Mm. That's something that I said to myself. And did you keep your promise? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have any regrets in your life, just any, any regrets? Yeah. If time is the clock, if yeah, mm -hmm. I will remind it thousand times. Mm -hmm. I will turn it over, over and over thousand times. Go to school myself but you know I always think yeah you know I always tell you that that's my biggest regret mm. in the, yeah yeah but at the same time I didn't get the chance to go further I didn't sit back I'm a hairdresser I when I came to this country I used to work for people but I managed to open my own and uh, I ran my own shop for Come the past on. 12 years. Come so, on, killer. So whatever you want to do, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do, you have to do it good. Do it to your best. You know, when I was working for that lady, her name is Fumi. We are like friends, mm -hmm. sisters. We talk, we laugh, we do everything. Even if I'm not in that shop, 
the, this woman will mention my name a thousand times. Even the people, the Ghanaians, few Ghanaians that come there and do their hair, they will say, oh, this woman, he, he, she has done ritual on you. You cannot leave her. That's what they used to, that's what they used to <laughs> say. <laughs> in jokes here, in a joke. <laughs> Not knowing that when I was there, I, I was preparing myself for my own. Yeah. You understand? There was a time this woman wanted to do her hair. Yeah. And she said, Bridget, you, she used to call me Bridget. Go and look there if you can get some pieces of hair and come and do my, we will fix my hair for me. And I said, oh, auntie, fool me. You own this shop. Even me that I work for you, I can afford to buy hair to do my hair. Why don't you? All she can say, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's what she used to say, you don't understand. If I say anything, she said, you don't. sometimes she said, oh, she's sick she's not feeling well but she'll come to the shop and i say ah oh, uh, auntie for me why stay home she said bridget you don't understand mm -hmm. <laughs> i said me if i have my shop i, I will sleep <laughs> if i feel like going to open the shop i'll go if i don't feel i'll just stay home and sleep <laughs> and I, said, oh, I didn't know it's the worst to have your own shop in this country <laughs> The stress, the pressure. <laughs> even if, 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 even if you cannot see, you will just kneel and you go and open the shop. Mm. Because if you don't go, you go against you. If you don't open the shop, everything is on you. So now I understand it better. So when I opened my shop, one day I went to him and I said, oh, "Auntie, put me." Now I understand and I understand it better. And they <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> if you're a boy or if you're a girl. Oh, I'm advising you to do it. Try to learn something for yourself. And if you do it good, you will benefit from it. It will help you in future. Mm -hmm. That is it for us. Huh? Was it that bad? Huh? Was it that bad? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad, was it? No, no, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>